Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for inviting me to be here in this wonderful leadership forum that we have at Business Over Coffee. I am Deborah Norwood, Laughter Lawyer USA, and the reason I'm called Laughter Lawyer USA isn't because I'm laughing at the legal stuff that's going on in the world, but because after being in the serious business of lawyering for over 27 years, I've come to the point where I believe that I can be taken seriously and I want people to become a little bit more serious about laughing at themselves and becoming more childlike and not childish in their attitudes. I'm very grateful to be a part of VOCI and be a part of the executive committee of VOCI because I have truly found heaven here. This is a place where people are taking risks and are bringing people together because they are not afraid to collaborate. They are not afraid to share. And I want to talk to you about one of the principles of leadership that happens to be something that I'm very, very interested in, and that is what it takes to become or to be happy. There are studies that are going on in the business world all over the place. The most recent article that came out in Psychology Today right now is what happy people do differently. Now, when we talk about happiness, and I, as Laughter Lawyer USA, have studied an awful lot about the brain. So I have a fundamental basic background in psychoneuroimmunology. I've talked to some really amazing people in the field. I believe that there is strong empirical evidence to show that a good attitude, that positive, positivism and joyfulness can bring an element into collaboration and an element into leadership that is absolutely essential for it to be lasting. So, what does it mean to be happy? In my case, I'd like you to know that the word happy is all very relative. And for those of us who are members of the Positive Psychology Association and who have truly studied, I'm also a member of the Applied Therapeutic Humor and Laughter Association, AATH. And what we've come to learn, and it's not about the ha-ha moments and the ha-ha, be happy all the time. It's about your general well-being. It's about entering into what a great person whose name is Daniel Goleman, who I would strongly recommend any of you who are interested in learning about leadership traits and core competencies of leaders, learn about Daniel Goleman and his EI, emotional intelligence. And this is, this is what leaders do that are truly entering into a well-being. They enter into a place called the flow. Anybody know what that flow is? Daniel Goleman says the flow is when you're into your work and you're so good and you're making it happen and things are magically just turning all around you because you're in this flow and you're attracting what you need to attract. Daniel Goleman explains that to get into that flow, you have to have a certain personality. And one of those personalities, one of those core competency traits, you guys, is risk taking. It says here, what do happy people do differently? They seek risk, not reward. Now, what does that mean in terms of a business leader? A business leader like Sherry Henley, a CEO of a company that has, as it's saying, like bringing everyone together, that has collaboration in the wording of their goals, is a person who's taking a risk. Because do you know what? If you want to collaborate with someone, you take the risk of them stealing your idea. You take the risk of them taking your hard thoughts, them taking your education, them taking your understanding of who you are, and taking it away from you. And we all know the famous story between Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, and we all have seen the movie, right? But what we don't know about this interesting situation with Steve Jobs, all of us know about his present presentation before Stanford University and he talks about how all looking back all the things that went wrong in his life all led to a good thing but later on in his years as he was really facing death Steve Jobs admitted something he admitted that had he not been so narcissistic and I want to talk one second about narcissism because this generation right now is probably the most narcissistic group of people that are on the planet right at this moment, not for the negative, I don't want to talk negative, but it is a comment that is happening among psychology groups. What is narcissism? Steve Jobs said, had he maybe not been so into me, he might not have been kicked out of his own company, 
And can we ever tell what might have happened? Had the collaboration effort gone? We'll never know, will we? Okay? So we know in retrospect, because of troubles and trials, we can rebuild, and Steve's a great example. But probably the greatest example of collaboration is a person who is willing to take a risk and not take so long to be able to share themselves <laughs> with another person because they are afraid that maybe <laughs> they will be taken down. When you see networkers, when you see real networkers, they're talking to each other. Hi, how you doing? Here's my card. Oh, I've got this going. I've got that going. It's the synergy that is so fast, so quick, so moving, and it's because nobody is afraid they're taking that risk. Another thing that leaders really know how to do is self-assessment. And I want you to understand that there are marvelous self-assessments available to you. There's the MBTI, Myers-Briggs Assessment. There are assessments on uh, Fordyce Emotional Inventories. There are assessments on leadership and emotional training. It is worth you being critical of yourself. Take some tests online. Find out, are you an ENTJ? Are you a this or that? If you need some help in knowing what the assessments mean, I'll be glad to help you. If not, there are psychologists galore and all kinds of people to analyze it. Lastly, I want you to know that as a minority rights attorney, as a person who's been involved in conflict resolution for many, many years, and now is involved in resilience training, that uh, I truly understand what it's like to bring groups together. The first few organizations that I represented, I have, I have great gifts for large groups. My MBTI says that about me. And I am grateful for that because I have been in the forefront of a Native American Intertribal Association, created one of the first organizations for interpreting in the state of Tennessee, created the first parenting program for our church was approved by the state of Tennessee, one of the first, you know, persons that was involved with international humanitarian law. Oh, great, great, me, me, me. But you know what I learned in these things? What I learned is that there is a thing called community conscience and raising people to the good. And if we unite to one another and try to search out what is best for everyone, then we are truly a leader. <coughs> Lastly, I want to tell you about two of the new ventures that I'm involved in. And those two ventures are with the city, Shelby County uh, Council on Domestic Violence. And I'm on the uh, advisory board of the uh, Memphis Shelby County Council on Domestic and Sexual Violence right now. I want you to be looking at our new outreach. We're going to be shinethelight.org. And through shinethelight.org, we're going to try to shine the light on what's happening in that community. You are going to shine the light. We are. We are <laughs> shining the light. We are shining the light. And then lastly, I do want you to know that we are also not taking small steps in working with Sajid Christopher at Human Friends International for a rapprochement and closement between Muslims and Christians. For any of you who are interested in joining me in that venture, I would like to invite you to be a part of Human Friends International. Lastly, I have to be laughter lawyer, and laughter lawyer never does anything without making people laugh a little bit. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about my new training. And I'm being trained, and I know that you know that everywhere laughter lawyer goes, she's got what? Gifts, she's got raffles going, and she's got people, and we got noisemakers, and we got things happening. Why? Why am I always presenting a gift to you? Because I want you to feel good about what's happening. I want you to know and expect good things of yourself. And not only that, but understand that the greatest present is the presence, okay? So I'm studying under Pregido Dove, and I'm learning about mindfulness, about living in the now. And I have a little volunteer here. Uh, I don't know if my volunteer is here. Sarah, are you here? Sarah has stepped out of the room. Okay, then I'm going to ask for another volunteer. And that is a person, Beverly. I apologize. You you want to come up? That's fine too. All right. Anyone who wants to come up, Beverly, stand by me. And this is our last comment for the day. When we talk about being mindful, when we talk about being present, we are also talking. Kneel on down for the cameras. <laughs> down to my level. Oh, brother. <laughs> Rise up to my level here. All right. So when we talk about what we want to be. I got my little bee hat on. I got this little bee to give you. My question to you is, what do you want to be? 
Be myself. Be yourself. <laughs> then do you know what I'm going to advise you to do? Do it now. This is the present. Don't have your mind be thinking about the future and what you're going to become. Whatever it is that you want to be, be it now. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, before we go off the air, I would like to say, um, Deborah, that does anyone have any questions in the audience? Uh, Dina? Wow, dynamic. I think this is the first time I've actually heard you speak that it's been like, not like leading the group. So, wow, dynamic. But one thing you said in there when we were talking about risk versus the reward. One of the things that I have found in my life, and I feel like this is helping me be a better leader, is, is that I am taking that risk, but it's more about stepping out of my comfort zone. Yes. Because I'm stepping out of my comfort zone that's making me grow as a person, and, make, and, and, I, and I'm hoping making me grow as a leader. And I, 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 I highly recommend that. When I look back over my life, I look at things that in my life that have changed me is where I stepped out of my comfort zone. And in Latcher Lawyer, we talk a lot about affirmations, and I want everybody to learn that affirmations are absolutely essential. Remember to say, I am. I accept myself. You know, I am receiving. Receiving is easy for me. Giving is easy for me. So my, so my, my, my recommendation to every one of you is to go ahead and do what, what Sherry has been doing with Business Over <coughs> Coffee. Don't be afraid of collaborating. Don't be afraid of bringing everyone together. That is the true hallmark of leadership. Yay. Okay, we have some virtual activity. We have Marcus who retweeted. Uh, go ahead and, and stay seated okay. because we're still on camera. All there right, we go. Sorry. Uh, Marcus retweeted. We also have Marcus who says, what does it mean to be happy? It's about your general well-being. And why was Harris says uh, compassionate? <laughs> there we go with that word again. Okay. And another thing I would like to mention is if you would like to hear Delmar or Deborah speak again um, in September. Uh, yes. Yes. Delmar is is having a conference called Living in the Now. And it's a great name. Great will name. Be one of the speakers for that. So I wanted to let you know that. And now, a drum roll as we bring up the word blog, and we're still live. Okay. Drum roll. We're all going to read these words together. This is what leadership means to our crowd as uh, Caroline. We need drum roll. Drum roll. Caroline is bringing it up, <laughs> we think. <laughs> okay, drums are getting a little light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened to our word blog? <laughs> Read them out. Read them out. All righty then. <laughs> okay, it was ready to go. It was on the screen. And now we do not see it. So we are going to go off the air. Uh, we will be bringing it back as soon as we go off the air. I do encourage you to get to know one another. We're wrapping up. I want to see the word blog. Can you and laughter lawyer Charlie? and Sherry. <laughs> Sherry, laughter lawyer has got a gift for you as we're walking out. And we're going to put the non-accusatory forgiveness stance because forgiveness and movement are essential for being able to make it in the world. So after the, the list goes up, we're going to have some music to move a network by. You better believe it. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up. Everybody Yay. say we are bringing everyone together. Bringing everyone together. <laughs>